Okay, everybody, um, welcome to the April meeting and a very unprecedented meeting uh, it is um, due to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic and uh, abiding by social um, distancing regulations and rules. Uh, this is our first ever Durham Valley Council meeting that I'm aware of uh, that's being conducted virtually. So for the record of um, the meeting, um, this meeting will be uh, a continuous recording of the meeting. Um, I'll go through the attendees uh, shortly and um, all of the attendees, all the elected members and staff uh, are dialing in virtually. Uh, so it is going to be something quite unique and quite different. Um, but uh, it's the it's the uh, world we're living in at the moment. So first off, uh, I declare the meeting open at uh, six eighteen, and I advise the public that this I advise that it is a council policy to record the proceedings of open meetings of council on digital media to assist in the preparation of minutes and to ensure that a true and accurate account of debate and discussion meetings is available. This audio recording is authorised by the Local Government Meeting Procedures Regulations 2015. Acknowledgement of country. I acknowledge and pay respect to the Tasmanian Aboriginal community as the traditional and original owners and continuing custodians of this land on which we gather today and acknowledge and pay respect to elders past and present. Now the conduct of the meeting, um, I will read the statement, um, but I will uh, rehash it a little bit because uh, we don't have members of the public in and we do have councillors that aren't actually in the room. Um, so essentially we normally read out a, a code of conduct, uh, sorry, a conduct of council meeting um, statement, um, but essentially councillors and staff that are on, online, um, let's just be respectful, um, let's not use bad language and um, let's make sure that we, uh, we have a really good debate around the issues and discussion around the issues uh, without having to get um, personal or, uh, or or angry with each other, um, if we ha if that if that happens, um, clearly I can, uh, I can under meeting regulations I can uh, I can reprimand councillors and ask them to uh, refrain from speaking. But um, I don't think we'll have any issues uh, this evening. So uh, clearly there won't be any tea and coffee uh, on the sides here for everybody. But I'm sure you probably have them uh, wherever you are sitting. Uh, so record of attendance, um, item number one, and because we're not all in the room, um, I'm going to go uh, around the room. Um, Mayor Shaw is present. Uh, Deputy Mayor Cosgrove. Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Belcher. Uh, not in attendance. Councillor Browning. Present. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Councillor Evans. Present. Thank you. Councillor Pierce. Present. Thank you. Councillor Triffitt. I'm here, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Woods. Present. Thank you very much. Uh, there are no apologies and no leave of absence. Item two, uh, confirmation of the minutes. Uh, can I have a mover, please? Deputy Mayor Cosgrove. Thank you. Moved, Deputy Mayor. Uh, second. Councillor Triffitt, I'll second that. Thank you. Councillor Triffitt is second. Would you like any discussion around that, Councillor Cosgrove? No, thanks, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Triffitt, any discussion? No, it's fine. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Browning. Yep, all good. Councillor Evans. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Woods. Nothing further to add. Thank you. With that, I'll put the motion. All those in favour? Uh, sorry, I'm going to have to. <laughs> I'll go back around the room. Um, I'll actually, maybe we'll, uh, maybe we'll go um, if anyone's against. Um, we'll do it that way so then we can speak up and then um, I'll ask for abstentions and then I'll take it as everybody else is uh, in favour. 
How's that? So, any councillors against the uh, minutes? Abstention? Uh, Councillor Pierce, abstaining. Your abstention for Councillor Pierce. Yep, thank you. So I'll take it as uh, everybody else is in favour. The motion is carried. Item three, declaration of pecuniary interest by members. Do we have any this evening, councillors? Councillor Browning, 10.4. Uh, Councillor Browning, item 10.4. Yep. Thank you. Any further procuring your interest, councillors? Any staff procuring your interest? No. Thank you. Noted. Uh, item 3.2, declaration of conflict of interest. Any con conflict of interest, councillors? Staff? Mind to be standing, Mr Mayor. Uh, yes, that's as written um, in the agenda, um, Councillor Evans. Thank you. No further. Thank you. Item number four, notification of council workshops. Do have a mover? I'll move that, Mr Mayor. Councillor Triffitt, move Councillor Triffitt. Second, Second, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Uh, any discussion, Councillor Triffitt? No, nothing to say, Mr Mayor. I'll just open it up to the floor. Any discussion, councillors, on the no, workshop? No, Mr Mayor. Uh, for the motion, um, any, any, uh, anyone against the motion? Any abstention? All right. Motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Uh, item number five, public question time. Item number 5.1, uh, public questions taken on notice from the previous meeting. Uh, and they were 5.11 as written, uh, 5.12 as written, 5.2, uh, sorry, item number 5.2, public question time received in writing. Uh, item 5.2.1. Um, as written, item 5.2.2, .2, as written, and item 5.3, public question time. Um, I'll just touch on that. Um, there is no public questions this evening, um, but there is a mechanism for the public to still uh, ask questions in public question time, and they are available up until 5pm, uh, and you can drop them off at the council or you can email them. So. We'll make that probably a little bit more widely widely known um, before our next virtual meeting, um, but we don't have any this evening, just so everyone's aware. Item six, petitions, deputations and presentations. There are nil. Uh, item seven, notices of motion. There are nil. Item eight, consideration of supplementary items to the agenda. Uh, we do not have any this evening. Item nine. Uh, planning authority items and I do remind the elected members that you will be acting as a planning authority this evening and uh, you must abide by the uh, by, by the uh, regulations um, under the uh, acting as a planning authority. Uh, item 9.1 planning uh, draft planning scheme amendment for bushfire prone area overlays. Do we have a mover? Thank you, Councillor Pearce. Thank you, Councillor Pearce. Um, do we have a second? I'll second I'll it, second Mr Mayor. Well. Yeah, I'll take uh, Councillor Evans. Yeah. I'd <coughs> so, Councillor Pearce, would you like to open discussion, Councillor Pearce? I just to say that it doesn't seem to impose anything new. Uh, it simply clarifies the existing uh, provisions. Uh, it's also not final, going out for public consultation. Thank you. Um, Councillor Evans, would you like to speak to the motion? Uh, no, Mr Mayor. I think Councillor Pearce hit it right on the head. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, Councillor Browning? All good, mate. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cosgrove? Nothing further to add. Thank you, Mr Mayor. 
Thank you. Councillor Triffitt? Nothing further, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Woods? No, nothing further either, thanks. Thank you. Um, again, uh, just for the benefit of everybody, councillors and uh, the recording, uh, this will take, obviously, a fair bit more time um, to go through it all, but it's just the, the world we live in at the moment. Um, again, I will call for, firstly, call for uh, any against the motion. Anyone against the motion? No. Any abstentions for the motion? No. So I take that as uh, everybody's for the motion and therefore the motion is carried. Item 9.2, development application, uh, Mossbeds Road, Lachlan. Do we have a mover? Okay, I'll get in. Councillor Pierce. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, second? I'll second that, Mr Mayor. Councillor Triffitt, thank you. Would you like to open debate, Councillor Pierce? I don't think I have anything more to say, just to support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Would you like to discuss it, Councillor Triffitt? No, thank you. Councillor Woods? No, it looks good to me. Thank you. Councillor Browning? All good, mate. Thank you. Councillor Cosgrove? Nothing further, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Evans? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. All good here. Thank you. Again, I will take uh, any uh, no votes or against votes. That's nobody. Uh, any abstentions to this one? That's nobody. Again, uh, I will take that as uh, everybody's for, and the motion is carried. Thank you. Item 9.3, uh, development application, uh, Humphrey Street, New Norfolk. Uh, additions and alterations to existing dwelling. Do we have a mover? I'll move it, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Trivett. Do we have a second? Okay, Councillor Pierce. Thank you, Councillor Pierce. Welcome back to by the way. Well, kind of kind of back. Uh, would you like to open discussion, Councillor Trivett? Um just to say that it's a really good report. And um, yeah, thank the planner for that. No worries. Uh, Councillor Pierce, would you like a discussion? Uh, nothing further to add. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Evans. Nothing to add to here, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Cosgrove? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Browning? No, nah, just that uh, another good report by the planner. Thank you. I'm sure the planner will be happy with that. Uh, Councillor Woods? And then nothing further to add. Thank you. Would you like to close, Councillor uh, Trivett? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. It's all been said. Okay. So again, um, just in the absence of a show of hands, um, we'll go for um, anybody against the motion? No. Any abstentions against the motion or on the motion? No. So I'll take that as uh, everybody for the motion and therefore the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Item 10, reports of officers and committees. Do we have a move, uh, monthly plan, sorry, item 10.1, monthly financial report. Do we have a mover? I'm back, so I'll try it this time. <laughs> Councillor Pierce, thank you. Second. Councillor Woods, I'll second that. Councillor Woods. Do you like to open discussion, Councillor Pierce? I would. I'm happy to note and receive the monthly financials, but while we appear to be pretty much on track for 75% of revenue and expenditure, 
the COVID-19 package uh, later in the agenda has the potential to impact quite significantly on the year and our outcomes. For example, we've got about $1.3 million of rates outstanding, of which nearly half a million dollars is outstanding from previous years, and is proposed to waive all debt recovery until the end of the year. It's hard to estimate the potential impact, but worst case, we could have a cash flow reduction of up to $800,000 in the current, this current year's outstanding rates by the end of June, if we aren't to pursue debt recovery. And that doesn't include the financial impact of the other support measures that have been proposed. We're already budgeting for a substantial deficit this year, so it's a good thing that over the previous few years, the Council has actively worked to build a reasonable cash position. Even so, page 17 of the monthly financials predicts an end of April cash position of just $4 million, $4.4 million, of which only 232000 is unrestricted. It is now highly likely that we will be starting into the restricted cash that is held to cover things like our various reserve funds and lead provisions. If we aren't very careful, we could uh, see, see our cash position looking very, very difficult next year. And with the support package proposing a zero rate increase for next year, plus the rate waiving of a range of fees, while anticipating a need for even more support, it will not be easy to retain all of these unrestricted cash expectations for years to come. It's not going to be easy to balance the post-COVID-19 economic situation with community expectations about council services and economic stimulus into the future. That's me. Thank you, Councillor Pearce. Um, Councillor Woods, would you like to go next? I'd just like to echo, echo the sentiments of Councillor Pearce. Um, it's going to be a bumpy ride, I think, but um, up to now, these financials have been really good, so yeah. break that down. Yeah. Councillor Triffitt? Um, I agree with Councillor Pearce and Councillor Woods. I'm actually quite concerned, um, actually scared about what's going to happen in the future, especially if something else comes, floods, fire comes in on top of in top of this, on top of this. So yeah. 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 Um Councillor Browning. Yeah, same as all the rest, mate. Difficult times. We've just got to manage the best we can and try and get through it like we're all trying to at the moment and um, mm -hmm. make strategic decisions the best we can, really, and try and uh, look into that crystal ball and see what we can do about the future along the way as well. So. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Cosgrove? <clears throat> um, I'm under the same opinion of all my colleagues who have spoken so far. Difficult times ahead. We're all in this together. Obviously, the pandemic's affected um, not only a local level, the a nation, the globe, and we just have to um, do our best to support the community and obviously look after our financial situation at the same time, as difficult as that may be. Thank you, Councillor Pulver. Councillor Evans. Uh, nothing further to add, Mr Mayor. I think it's all been covered. Um, it's quite understandable by everyone in the room. Mm. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Um, I might just add, um, I, I think we've been sharing pretty much all the info we can uh, in terms of what we're getting from the government, um, both federally and, and at state level, um, both uh, from LGAT and from ALGA as well, who are advocating very heavily on behalf of... Uh, councils in Tasmania and, and across the country. Um, I understand, completely understand everybody's concerns and, and we're all concerned. Um, the messaging from the Prime Minister and the Premier and everybody else in between is that nobody is going to be spared financially from this COVID-19 um, pandemic and trying to keep, um, A, our staff employed, um, the economy going, whilst trying to keep everybody safe and healthy as well. Um, so there's actually there's actually, um, there's actually an expectation that all councils will be dipping into their reserves and their cash, um, Council Pierce mentioned, off the top, um, and it's just going to be reality. Or we find other, other measures, which is loan borrowing and things like that, which certainly don't help us in the long-term financial uh, scheme of things as well. So what we have to do is just make sure that Yes, we're, we're being very smart about what we do, um, but also being mindful that the state and federal government basically will be cash-strapped in terms of stimulus and, and help um, 
in about six to eight months, the, the prediction is. Um, and we will be expected not to have cash reserves sitting around um, when people are struggling and communities are struggling. So just something to sort of be aware of. Obviously, it's all not official um, in terms of what we're being asked, um, but we have to make the best decisions we can here at local level. So uh, it's extremely scary times, and I don't think anyone knows where it's going to end, um, but we just have to do our best to try and deliver our services, keep our staff employed, um, but keep everybody safe as well. So it's going to be very difficult. Um, yeah. Councillor Pearce, would you like to close? Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm aware that we've got cash reserves and that we need to use them a little bit for this purpose. But I'm also aware that if we actually run out of cash and can't pay our bills, we become insolvent. So I think we've got to keep a really close eye on, that, on our cash uh, payments and cash balances. Just, just to be, um, just to clarify, um, there is some measure. There is some measures that uh, the state government um, are trying to put in place in, around that as well. Um, in terms of insolvency and um, audits and, and different types of things. Um, so we'll, we'll get some clearer messaging over the next few weeks of, of where all that sits. Um, but there's definitely um, there's definitely a push for us to be using those reserves. So I, I know it's a, it's a very scary time um, and, but we, and we'll need to say that in writing um, to say that you know, we can either trade, trade insolvent um, or, or how we do it or we, or we have to borrow. Um, against our assets um, instead. So, but, yeah, there's a long way to go, um, but you're right. We need to be very careful what our next steps are. Would you like to add, sorry, I cut, would you like to add anything further to close? No, that's fine. Okay. Um, well, I'll put the motion. Again, um, I'll call for any against this motion, monthly financial report. No, any abstentions against the monthly financial report? No. Uh, with that, I'll take it. Everybody is four, and the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you. Um, item 10.2. Huh? Yeah, 10.2. Yep. Uh, planning applications dealt with by delegation. Uh, do we have a mover? Move, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Move, Councillor Evans. Second. I'll second that, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Triffitt. Second, Councillor Triffitt. Would you like to open discussion, Councillor Evans? Uh, Mr. Mayor, just a comment that yeah, it's nice to see things still developing um, in the community and and works going ahead and people investing. So we may see that diminish over the forward time. Uh, probably not so much initially. We have the forward schedule of a lot of building companies, so um, hopefully there's still investment coming in as we move forward. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Evans. It's good to see. Um, Councillor Triffitt, would you like to add anything? Um, just that ex-Councillor Graham would be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Woods? Nothing further to add. Thank you. Councillor Browning? Nothing more to add. Councillor Cosgrove? Nothing further, Mr Mayor. Councillor Pearce. Just to say, I really hope it all actually turns into construction because we need all the rates we can get. Sure. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, would you like to close, Councillor Evans? No, that's fine, Mr Mayor. I think everything's been covered. Thank you. Uh, again, keeping in the same theme, we'll take the against the motion first. Any abstentions to the motion? No. Again, I'll take that as uh, a vote for unanimously and the motion is carried. Thank you. Item 10.3, minutes of special committees. We have a mover. Nope. I'll move it just for the sake of it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, glad to I'll second, you. Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Uh, would you like to uh, have a discussion around the minutes, Councillor Pierce? No, nothing, nothing to add. Councillor Evans? 
Nothing to add either, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Deputy Mayor. <clears throat> um, no, I just note that it, I was when I was reading through some of these uh, minutes, the New Norfolk um, Business Alliance, it caught my attention that there's discussions about a car show. I find mm. that quite interesting. I think that um, it's wonderful that they're planning another event in the Valley and mm. I personally believe that that could be a great ex um, success. It could encourage people to come and um, visit New Norfolk and, mm. yeah, I'd like to see how that develops. Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you'd like some, uh, more information, that one actually came through uh, myself. Um, oh. <laughs> the local residents uh, brought it to me. Um, and then I passed it to uh, our regional development officer. Um, and we also put them in touch with the Business Alliance, the Lions Club and uh, Rotary, um, just in terms of because there were the two people who are successful at running car shows but under someone else's banner, um, mm. so, they're pri so they're private entities. Um, so easier for insurance and different things if an organisation that has that overarching mm. banner. So that's why we put them in touch with the Business Alliance and and those uh, groups. It sounds very exciting, something very similar mm. to um, the Deloraine car show. So they want music and food and, mm. and cars, things like that. So, yeah, it'd be good. It'd be one to watch. Yeah, excellent. That's great. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, anything further, Councillor um, Cosgrove? Uh, no, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Triffitt? Nothing to add, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Woods? No, nothing further to add. Councillor Browning? Nothing from me. Thank you. Would you like to close Council Affairs? No, I'm happy. With that. Okay, um, again, conti continuing the theme, uh, all those against the motion? Take that as no one. Um, anybody abstaining, abstaining from the motion? Again, no one. So again, I'll take that as uh, unanimously for the motion. And therefore, the motion is carried. Thank you very much. Item 10.4, uh, COVID-19 community support package. Do we have a mover? Uh, Councillor Pierce, I'd like to move it with a small addition. Uh, that's OK. Uh, what's... Oh, sorry. Um, just before we move, Councillor Browning declared a, um, a pecuniary interest in item 10.4. Yep. Yeah. So I was still oh, in sorry, the discussion, mate, but I'll step away. Discussion, Councillor Browning. And yeah, I'll yeah. step away, though, from voting. Uh, yeah, okay. So you can't contribute to the discussion. If you no, no, not, but I'll yeah. listen. I'm in the room. So you're saying the room. Yeah. Uh, I think you still have to contribute. I think you still have to vote, either, even if it's an abstention, if you're staying in the room. So. Okay, well, I'll leave. That's fine. Um, if, if anyone might be able to help, but I'm pretty sure if you're in the room, if you're in the room, yes. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, Councillor Pearce, what was that? He is required to leave the meeting if he declares an interest. Correct, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've left the virtual room. Thank you. Yep, just confirming that Councillor uh, Browning has left the virtual meeting. Yep, uh, Councillor Pierce, thank you. Okay, I'd like to move the, uh, the motion as recommended with an addition to um, uh, motion number one. I'd like to add at the end of it with the exception of where council has already endorsed legal proceedings to commence per the council decision 269 slash 2019 and regulatory enforcement action uh, in brackets that is MPS for infringement notices. Just for um, clarification, because we're not all here in the room, um, I would normally um, ask for a seconder, um, but some might not know uh, what that references to, Councillor Pierce, would you be able to just give some background? Uh, yeah, uh, back in uh, well, Council Decision 269 2019 was basically to refer some particular um, long outstanding rates uh, for um, sale of property uh, and uh, the regulatory enforcement action is things that in the past have already gone to MPES for treatment recovery. 
So they're, 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 they're outstanding deaths from a long time ago. Um, they're not outstanding because of anything to do with COVID-19. And action is already on the way to try and recover them. Okay. I'll, I'll let you talk to it again um, if we can get a second of it. I think that's I think that's. Ask for a I'll second that, Mr Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Evans. Um, there we go. Councillor Pierce, would you like to clarify further on that? Or was that the only point you were um, attending? As I, as I mentioned in a previous agenda item, Council has about $1.3 million of rates outstanding, of which nearly half a million dollars is outstanding for previous years. The motion as recommended proposed to waive all debt recovery until the end of the year. But the Council already has a range of actions underway, including the commencement of legal proceedings to sell a property to recover long outstanding rates from previous years. These remain outstanding for reasons that predate anything to do with COVID-19. And it would be unfortunate to suspend a recovery action that is already underway. <coughs> More generally, in relation to my overall motion, I'm happy to move and support it while being a little concerned about how it's come about. <coughs> Council representatives at the last ILGAP meeting um, voted to support the bulk of this package without reference back to their councils and without the opportunity for this council to consider the implications in advance. While ILGAP acknowledges that each council would be in a different situation, the ILGAP outcome in effect obligates this council to endorse the package whether it wants to or not, or whether the particular circumstances in the Dermot Valley warrant it or not. My view is that we need to proceed, but I'm a little, little bit concerned just about the process. The Commonwealth and state governments have released a variety of support packages for individuals and businesses affected by the economic shutdown. And other organisations such as banks, health funds, private hospitals and so on are also making contributions. This seems to be changing on an almost daily basis. As yet unclear to me what the role of local government ought to be in supporting the community through the health and economic crisis and in due course the recovery phase once the immediate crises are over. No doubt the support package included in this motion is just the beginning and the Council will be asked to and will need to consider its future actions during the budget deliberations and beyond. We shouldn't underestimate the potential impact of this proposed support package. As one example, we could have a cash flow reduction of up to $800,000 being the current year's outstanding rates by the end of June if we suspend the recovery and ratepayers decide to postpone their rate payments, rate payments as a result. And that doesn't include the financial impact of the other support measures that have been proposed for this year. The package also makes commitments into next financial year. Some aspects of this package could significantly affect the Council's cash flow and financial position next year, and our next year's budget will need to carefully consider these implications to ensure continuity of service and that we will still have sufficient cash to pay our bills as they fall due. That's enough. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I might actually clarify the first part um, because obviously I was in the room um, with LGAHC and I might actually throw to Bill um, after that. Um, as I think you actually mentioned it, um, as you're aware, the LGAHC, whilst not trying to um, push each individual council into making a decision, it was quite clear that um, it was it was passed. Uh, as a recommendation and then that it had to go back to each individual councils, uh, councils. Um, the reason that was done and done in that manner was so there was some consistency around the state in terms of what packages were being offered in, in an interim um, process. And that basically came about from the Premier's request. And there was um, some quite strong language um, that was going around at the time and, and everybody was under um, a fair bit of pressure to, to step up. Um, that basically said, if you don't start looking after your communities, we'll force you to start looking after your communities in terms of these packages. This is essentially what the state government asked local government to do as, an, as, a, as a starting point measure. Uh, so they, they asked the sector to do this. So quite a lot of debate um, and it was seen that it was the best option um, to look at it to um, have a consistent approach across the state and then take it back to councils, and that's why ours is here. So that's how it got here. Um, we didn't actually approve um, that we would do this. We approved that um, this should be the way that we move forward. Um, and but we need to take. We 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 know that it had to go back to each individual council for ratification. So I get what you're saying. Um, in tough times, 
unprecedented times we haven't seen before. Um, that's the way it came out. Um, and that's where we're at at the moment. That's just a bit of a clarification on your point about LJT. Um, Bill, um, just for the reference, uh, for the sorry, for the um, recording, um, Bill Richardson is our Chief Financial Officer, um, or has been our Chief Financial Officer, and is currently in the Acting General Manager's role. Um, did you want to make any um, clarifications or points around the finances? And I clearly we're all a little bit concerned, but Councillor Pierce has just raised a few sort of scary issues. Um, have you got anything to say, I guess, on this first package and, and anything into the future? Um, thank you, Mayor. I, um, I agree with Councillor Pearce that there are a lot of frightening aspects of the package, but I also point out that the it's a, it's a daily feast at the moment. Things keep changing. Um, it's throwing our budgeting process uh, into a into a bit of a spin at the moment. It will it it threatens to delay the finalisation of the budget. It's changed the way we're trying to do the budget as an exercise this year. All of those things said, uh, as the mayor has said, there has been many overtures from the state government saying that that while they want us to do these things, they're not going to let councils fail. Um, that doesn't mean we won't be run very close to running out of cash on occasions. Well, we're investigating our options in terms of interest-free borrowings as one, one, one avenue to supplement our cash position. Uh, as everybody knows with borrowings, borrowings come with repayments, so they're not a, they're not a get out of jail free card. We're looking at our options in terms of shoring up available cash to the council in terms of things such as overdrafts, um, longer term borrowings for capital works. Uh, there's a range of things, but yes, unfortunately, everything is still a bit fluid at the moment. And until the good ideas of what council can do stop coming in, we're in a difficult position in terms of advising councillors exactly what the impact is. Uh, that said, uh, with my CFO cap on, um, I'm what, watching the cash flow implications most closely because there is, a, there is an inference in the messages from the state government to say, we don't mind that you trade uh, in a deficit position. But there's very little talk at the moment about cash flow and the, the possibility of running out of cash. And I'm in my messaging back to Legat uh, saying, well, profitability is one thing, having cash in the bank is a more important thing in the short term. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Bill. Um, look, I, I think no doubt, again, Councillor Pierce, we, you know, we have a long way to go in terms of understanding um, what's coming in, what's going out and and what's expected of us. Um, yeah, this, this is the, you, you mentioned, this is the first of probably many things are going to be asked of local government over the next... Uh, next little period but what I suggest is that we get in a room um, as soon as we know the details of state federal uh, funding and and different loan options and and grants and things like that and really nut it out and I think Bill's in the right position to be able to help us with that so hopefully we can get through it um would you like to add anything in the opening statement Councillor Pierce as soon as we took over a little bit Oh, look, I think I, I'm, I'm agreeing with everything you've said. I understand why you'll get to know what they've done. It's just un unfortunate that the process has created a need for us to um, comply whether we want to or not. Yeah. Uh, I understand that but obviously we've got a long way to go um, in terms of working out what our next year's budget is going to look like. Um, I'm pleased to hear that, 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 uh, that Bill is focusing on cash flow as well as just the deficit. You, you can you can you can run an accounting loss, but you can't but if you run out of cash you can't pay people you can't pay the salary of our staff. Yeah. Um, so we've really got to manage that carefully. Um, but I endorse the package. I think that everyone else is out there and is is providing help and support in the community and we need to do our share. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor Pierce. Um, Councillor Evans, would you like to add anything? Uh, nothing to add, Mr. Mayor. Just thank Councillor Pierce for his opening statements and Bill for his add-on there. Um, I think that's covered it off quite nicely. Thank you. 
Thanks, Councillor Evans. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, I might come back to the Deputy Mayor. Um, Councillor Trevor. I'd um, just like to thank Councillor Pearce and the Acting GM. Um, this package, I think, has the biggest reach to help support the community at this time. Thank you, Councillor Trevor. Uh, Councillor Woods. Um, looking through the recommendations, um, items like waiving dog registration fees and kennel licences and food licences, um, I think it's really uh, pertinent that although the money is going to be an actual loss, keeping up the registrations for those items, mm. is really, um, it's really forward thinking um, and just keeps us, you know, moving in the right direction, keeping the animals um, um, registered, etc. And, you know, the community does need to know that the last thing we want people to be worrying about is getting their dogs registered and having to pay for that instead of the food on their table. So I just wanted to add that. But it must be said that that'll be $85,000 less next year. So, yeah. you know, we're weighing up the options. Um, community just needs to know that whatever help we can give comes out of what we can do for the community on the other side. So, Yeah, absolutely. I, th I think our messaging and our communication around this is going to have to be very strong. Um, and we're going to have to, you know, whatever we do, um, stick together in terms of saying, look, we really want to help. Um, we just need to make sure that we're making sensible decisions because we have staff to, to, to worry about, as Councillor Pearce and, and uh, the Acting General Manager mentioned. Um, we have our uh, essential services to deliver and all of these things. Um, so we just need to be very careful um, what we do. But I think the messaging has to be very clear, like you just mentioned, that um, we are trying to do whatever we can um, to ease the burden and, and ease the stress in our community while still trying to make sure that we have a functioning council moving forward. So. Thanks for your comment. Um, Councillor, uh, Deputy Mayor Cosgrove, I, I had to add you back. Um, yeah. I think you're, yeah, I'm back. Sorry about that. Just a little technical issue there on my okay. behalf. Um, from what I have heard this evening, apart from that moment that I was cut off, I do support what my um, colleagues are saying. And I do think that it's important that we are sensible um, in every decision we make from here on in. Um, but I will be supporting this community support package this evening. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Browning's out of the room. I would you like to close, Councillor Pearce? I think we've said enough. I think so. Um, with that, um, keeping in the same theme, I'll call for anybody against the motion. Any abstentions? No. So with that, I'll take it that everybody is for. So therefore, the motion is carried unanimously. Thank you very much, councillors. And I'll invite Councillor Browning back in. Um, I think we're going to have to text message him, so I'll just... Uh, I'll just see how that works um, for him to dial back in. So let's see how we go. Just bear with me for a minute. I think he's back. Um, Cancel Browning, you there? Yeah, yes, mate. That's, Thank you very much. That's a different experience in this <laughs> situation, isn't it? It is. Um, yeah. Anyway, we will uh, we we will get better at this. Um, yeah, we'll have I to think, work on that I, one. I think. I think. Yeah, <laughs> we'll have to uh, have to play with it. Certainly, in uh, an uncertain and different time, trying to uh, navigate through this when we've never been able to do it before. Um, so anyway, we're, we're getting there. And thank you, everybody, um, because it is a little bit difficult. Uh, 10.5, the draft recreation play and open space strategy. Do we have a mover? Yeah, I'll move it, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Triffitt. Moved, Councillor Triffitt. Councillor second. Councillor Woods, second. Oh, thank you, Councillor Woods. Councillor Woods, second the motion. Would you like to open discussion, Councillor Triffitt? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I actually found this quite a difficult report to read. Um, 
there's a lots and lots of information in there. Mm. Um, if we can do some of it, that would be great. Um, I did get a little bit down by all the recommendations in it and thinking our budget um, this year and next year. Um, but, you know, life does go on, councils do go on, so, mm. and that's what we're here for, for the betterment of the community. So I thank the um, Executive Manager for that report. Thank you, uh, Councillor Trivett. Um, I think I'd note your point there as well. Um, going out for uh, community consultation um, is going to be interesting to uh, see what communities say. Um, the, the report was quite in depth and extensive and hopefully they uh, hopefully the um, can take the time to read it and, and make some comment on it. Oh good. Um, Councillor Woods would you like to add anything? Yeah um, it is very comprehensive but it's, it's quite a large document and I'd, I'd urge any um, person in the community who's interested in recreation and play especially with kids, uh, people with kids and families that would um, utilise spaces to read it. There's a lot of spaces I didn't realise actually existed in the valley <laughs> for those purposes, which, you know, being only here 10 years and to most people in the community, that's nothing. Mm -hmm. A very new person. Um, uh, I think it also opens up the possibility for businesses and uh, not-for-profit organisations to to benefit from using spaces that they also didn't probably didn't know existed to be utilised. Um, yeah, there would be some money that, that we'd have to look at as council to um, activate spaces better. But I think there there's also there's also opportunity there for uh, people in the community and organisations and businesses to um, latch hold of this and find amazing things that we can do in the valley for people in the future. Thank you, Councillor Woods. Good. Uh, Councillor Pitt. Uh, nothing further, Trey. Thank you, Councillor Pierce. Uh, Councillor Evans. Nothing further, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Uh, Deputy Mayor. Nothing further, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Councillor Browning. Um, yeah, as others have already mentioned, there's, there's a lot to digest in that document. Um, but at the end of the day, it is, it is a long-term document. It might take 10, it might take 15, it might take 20 years to get there, but at least we're starting. We've got a starting point to work with. So we need to just grab the, the easy, the, the, the simple stuff that can be done um, in, in the budget and just, just start the process and get the ball rolling and, and make use of this document. It mightn't be perfect right now, but we can work on it. It's not it's not done once and then that's it. It gets put in the drawer and, and away it goes. We, um, we, we need to keep improving it and keep working on it, see what works, what doesn't. But the important thing is, is we start actioning it and get it actually going um, and don't let it end up on the shelf gathering dust and, and nothing happens again. So... Um, I think that's the key point, but it's a good starting point. I think it's a good document for when subdivisions happen um, mm. to give some guidance and some discussion um, around what needs to happen with potential developers and so on. So I think it's a um, if that alone um, is a good docu document to start that sort of conversation. So, um, so yeah, it's good to see it finally come through the draft anyway. Um, and yeah, let's let's start working through it in line with the strategic plan. Thank you, Councillor Browning. Um, Councillor Triffitt, would you like to close? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Um, with that, I'll put the motion again, and as per tonight's meeting, um, we'll call for anyone against the motion first. Nobody? Um, any abstentions for the motion? Abstention, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillor Evans, abstaining. Thank you, Councillor Evans. Uh, so I take it the other five are for the motion. Uh, so the motion is carried uh, five, uh, sorry, four is Councillor Browning, Councillor Cosgrove, Councillor Pierce, Councillor Triffitt, Councillor Woods and myself. So that's six um, with one abstention, Councillor Evans, uh, the motion is carried. Thank you.
Sorry, threw me into a bit of a spin there. So, changing up the way uh, we've done the, the whole night. So, how it's happening. Uh, item 10.6, uh, Senior Management Report. Do we have a mover? I'll move it, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Trivett. Moved, Councillor Trivett. Second. I'll give in, Councillor Pearce. Sounds so enthusiastic, Councillor Pearce. Second of the Councillor Pearce. Would you like to open discussion, Councillor Trivett? Um, no, thank you, Mr Mayor. It's all good. Thank you. Councillor Pearce, would you like any discussion? No, thanks, Mr Mayor. All good. Thank you, Councillor Evans. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. No, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Browning. Nothing further from me. Thank you, Councillor Woods. Nothing further. Thank, thank you, you Councillor Woods. Would you like to close, Councillor Triffitt? No, thank you. Okay, thank you. With that, I'll put the motion. Um, again, uh, any I'll call for the against the motion. Anybody uh, abstentions for the motion? I'll take that as nobody. Uh, I will call for the motion and I will take it as uh, carried unanimously in the fours. Thank you. Uh, item 11, Councillor raised questions. Item 11.1, uh, sponsors to Councillor questions taken on notice. Uh, item 11.3.1, uh, Councillor Evans, um, cost of the code of conduct complaint. Um, that is there and as written. Uh, item 11.2, Councillor questions received in writing. I have none this evening. Item 11.3, Councillor questions without notice. Do we have any this evening, Councillors? Um, would you like me to go around the room or just speak up if you actually just speak up if you've got one? No. Give it another. Give another Mr. Look. Mayor, just a just a just a point, Mr. Mayor. I thought of um, it. going forward. No, 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 not a question. It's more oh, of a okay. statement, really, um, about communication in these times, mm. and even utilising our our Facebook and our other forms of media that may be putting our details of our email addresses up for people to be able to engage with us um, because people are out there in need at the moment and, and feeling stressed. So I think it's so they can communicate with us directly and then we can bring back some information. I think, you know, so they can still keep in contact. We can't do as we used to do, walk up and down the street yep. as, as much um, as we used to. So I think putting those out there so that we can, you know, I don't know what other people's feel is. I don't mind mine being there um, if people need to, to, to reach out. Yeah, thanks, um, Councillor Evans. I'll, I'll, instead of going around the room, um, I'll just leave it um, as open. If anybody is against that, um, just contact um, Melinda um, and yeah, and uh, and probably um, the comms officer. Um, they are obviously also already on the internet um, in terms of social media. If there's anything uh, around sort of um, community care support um, information. Um, we could certainly uh, uh, put the elected member emails there and offer offer everybody up as a solution. So then, if uh, if anybody in, individual in the community um, prefers to speak to one elected member over another or a couple of them, um, then they have all the details there. But I mean, it is, it is on the website. But I I think yeah, probably not a bad point to put it on social media as well. Um, I certainly take your sentiments as well, Councillor Evans. Uh, I was speaking to a colleague uh, today from uh, a northern council and a, a mayor from the nor a northern council, and we were talking that uh, it actually seems that it's been probably busier, um, or you know, certainly as busy um, as before COVID-19, but uh, just in a different way in terms of uh, messaging, um, emailing, um, private messaging on social media. Uh, phone calls, um, meetings like this. Uh, I've had quite a few, and I know other elected members have as well with different uh, organisations and community groups. 
um, it's just a different way of doing it. So uh, I take your point. Um, let's, uh, let's get out there as much as we can um, in the best way we can. Do I add anything further to that, Councillor Evan? Uh, no, Mr Mayor. I'll uh, reserve the right. Thank you. Um, any further um, questions without notice, councillors? No, thank you. Nice and easy on me tonight. Uh, item 12, matters proposed for consideration in the closed meeting. Uh, they are a confirmation of the minutes of the previous closed meeting, uh, Valley Children's Centre, closed senior management report, a request of leave of absence and a public announcement determination. Do we have a mover? Deputy Mayor Cosgrove will move. Uh, move, Deputy Mayor Cosgrove. Thank you. Second? I'll second that, Mr Mayor. Uh, second, Councillor Triffitt. Thank you very much, Councillor Triffitt. Uh, any discussion, Councillor um, Cosgrove? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, anyone have any uh, anything they would like to not discuss in close or any uh, discussion? They can just speak up now. No. I'll take that as uh, no further discussion on that matter. Um, Do I propose, Councillor Cosgrove? No, thank you, Mr Mayor. Right. For the motion, uh, and I'll take uh, all those against this motion first. I'll take that as nobody. Um, any abstentions to the motion? I'll take that as none. So therefore, I'll take that as all in favour and the motion is carried unanimously. Um, item 13, uh, closure of the meeting to the public. Do we have a mover? I'll move, move Mr. Mr Mayor. Mayor. Uh, Councillor Evans. Yep. Um, moved by Councillor Evans, thank you. And second? I'll second it. Second by Councillor Triffitt. Thank you, Councillor Triffitt. Discussion, Councillor Evans? Right. Any further no, discussion? Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any further discussion, councillors? With that, I'll put the motion. Anyone against going into the closure of the meeting? Any abstention to this motion? I'll take that as carried um, unanimously in the four. Therefore, we close the uh, open meeting at 7.15. And uh, we will resume shortly. Um, I'll advise uh, for the recording purposes that I will now turn the audio recording equipment off and all uh, non-required uh, staff uh, will leave the meeting as well. Um, talk to you shortly. <laughs> 